All right, welcome back. It's uh, it's part two. So I have uh, a default scene opened here, and we're going to learn some of the basic operations that are required to start manipulating 3D objects in your scene. So the three most important ones that you're going to want to know right away are grab, scale, and rotate. So if you select your object, I'm going to hit G to grab. You'll notice that uh, it, it, I'm just sort of dragging the mouse around and it's it's moving with the, with the mouse cursor. And then when I left click, it's going to confirm and place the object there. And if you hit control Z, you can, you can undo. And by the way, I have screencast keys turned on in the bottom left hand corner. That's this thing down here so that you can see what keys I'm pressing as we go along. That way, you know, if I forget to say something or, uh, you know, I'm moving too quickly, you can, you can sort of follow along and, and pause the video and see exactly what keys I'm pressing in order to do, uh, in order to do which actions. So over here in the left hand panel, I have this select box, uh, tool selected, just click the, click the box G to grab and then click to confirm wherever you want to, to place it. So the next one that you need to know is rotate, which again is pretty simple. You hit R to rotate, uh, R it'll rotate currently according to whichever direction the camera is facing. So you can see if I drag my mouse around, it's rotating around from, you know, sort of the, the perspective of the camera looking at it. And then if I left click again, it'll confirm and leave that, leave that rotation how it is. And then lastly, the last one that you need to know is how to scale. Uh, which is S. So if you hit S and then drag the mouse in, it'll get smaller, drag it out, it'll get bigger. Pretty, pretty straightforward. However, uh, the most useful thing that you're going to use quite a lot is going to also be restricting each of these three commands in a specific axis. So if you push, for example, G, and let's say I want to drag it up, which is the Z axis. If I I hit G, I haven't left clicked yet to confirm its placement. I'm going to hit Z. Now you can see it's locked to the Z axis, so it's only going up and down. And that can be really useful. This is something you're going to use a lot, and it works in all three axes. So I ax, axes, ax I. So if I push GZ, I go up and down. If I push GY, I go forwards and backwards. If I push GX, I can move the cube to the left and right. And this works for all three of those main commands. So uh, grab, rotate, and scale. So if I hit R to rotate, you can see it's rotating from the perspective of the camera, which is not that useful. But uh, if I now push Y, it's rotating only along the X axis. Or if I push X, it's only rotating along that X axis. If I push Z, it's only rotating along the Z axis. So I can hit RX and then confirm. And you can see it's, it's kept that, it's kept that rotation. And the same is true for scaling. So if I select the object and I hit SZ, it gets taller. If I hit SY, it gets longer. If I hit SX, it gets, it gets wider. Another important thing to note here is that you can also enter values. So for example, uh, for rotate, the value are, uh, the value is degrees. So if I push R X, so it's going to rotate in the X axis. And then if I type 45, it's going to rotate at 45 degrees in the X axis. And you can see it's, it's locked in that place for scale. It's uh, relative sizes. So if I push, S2, it gets twice as big. If I type S.5, it gets half as big. If I type, uh, you know, S4, it gets four times larger and, and so on and so forth. And then for grab, uh, you can also enter, uh, you can also enter amounts in blender units. The default blender unit is one meter. I believe the default cube is two meters high. So if I type GZ1, it should move one meter up in the Z axis. So let's do that. So G Z one, you can see it moved up one meter in the Z axis so that it's now resting flat on this uh, sort of world origin plane. I'll also mention that you can also use the gizmo here to rotate and to move the viewport 
by clicking and dragging. And I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. And they also exist over here in the tools panel on the left hand side. So there's a move tool, which if you click on the object will give you this gizmo that just does movement and a rotate tool that if you click just gives you the rotation tools and the same for scale. So if you click and drag these, it'll scale on those axes. And then it also has a transform tool that will show the gizmos for all three of these at once so that you can, you know, rotate and move and scale. And I'm not really sure why you'd want to do this rather than just using keyboard shortcuts, but uh, it's there if you for some reason wanted to. But I like to keep it at uh, this tool on the uh, select box. And by the way, if you click and hold on these tools on the, the left hand bar, it will also reveal some sub menus that have additional additional tools. I like to keep this one on the on the select box, which is the default. In terms of moving in the viewport, it's uh, again, middle mouse button to rotate the camera around what you're looking at and shift middle mouse will allow you to pan and then the mouse wheel to zoom in and, and zoom out. And so with, with those three, you should be able to, to move seamlessly throughout the scene. Lastly, there are also perspective views uh, that are very helpful. And uh, if you remember from the first video, I turned on emulate numpad. So this will be the keys, uh, the number keys at the top of my keyboard. But if you have a numpad and you didn't turn on emulate numpad, uh, emulate numpad, then it'll be the number keys on your number pad on your keyboard. Uh, so it is one for the view from the Y axis, three for the view from the X axis, and then seven for the view from the top. So from the Z axis looking down. So we're currently looking down at the top of the object. All right, let's finish up this video by making something. So I'm going to select this default cube and hit X to delete and then click on this to confirm. You can also click, uh, just click on the object and hit delete. Um, but X is a useful shortcut because we, we also use it for uh, sort of deleting uh, deleting other things as well. And a lot of things in Blender give you this sort of click to confirm menu. All right, so with the cube deleted, I'm gonna go shift A and that's gonna bring up this add context menu that's gonna allow us to add 3D objects to the scene. I'm gonna add a mesh. Most 3D objects are, are meshes. Don't worry about these other things for now and I'm gonna add a UV sphere. And one of the things you'll notice when this comes up is that it pops up this context menu in the bottom left-hand corner. Yours might be minimized uh, because I've, I've done this before, but if you add this for the first time and you don't see it and it's just this little box, just click on this little arrow here and uh, that, will, that will come back. And this allows you to control the settings of the object that you are adding to the world. And lots of operations in Blender bring up a context menu like this in the bottom left-hand corner before you confirm the operation. So say, for example, I want a, uh, you know, a slightly more dense, uh, slightly more dense sphere. I can add more segments. I can add some more, some more rings and that's pretty good. That's fine. So I'm just going to click off of this. And one thing that's worth noting as well is if you accidentally clicked off your object and that context menu disappeared, it seems like it's gone forever. You can bring it back by pushing F9 and it will reappear. However, it will only reappear for whatever the last operation was. So if I now move this sphere, so if I drag it or I scale it or I rotate it or something and I push F9, it's not going to bring back the context menu for creation is only going to bring back here. Let me see if I rotate this on X and I push F9, Oops, F9, it's only bringing back the context menu for whatever that previous operation was. So, all right, so let's control Z to undo that. So now we have our sphere added to the scene, by the way, in case you didn't know, control Z is the shortcut to, to undo and you can undo up to, I think 32 times by default, but you can increase that number in the preferences. So let's just select this sphere and I'm gonna hit Shift D, which is gonna create another one. And like the grab, scale, rotate operations, this also can be constrained to a specific axis. So lots of operations can be constrained in that way. So I'm gonna, before left clicking to confirm, I'm gonna hit Z to lock this to the Z axis so that I'm only dragging it up. And I'm gonna put it 
about here and then S to scale and just make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna shift D again to make a duplicate of that. Z to drag up in the X axis and click to confirm and then S to scale. Now just to practice, uh, you know, sort of what we've learned with the, uh, the scaling along a specific axis, I'm gonna also give him a nose. So shift A to add another mesh. And this is, this time we're gonna select a mesh cone and you can see it appeared in the world and it also appeared here in the outliner because it's it's underneath all of these objects but if you you know for whatever reason couldn't see it you can also select objects from the outliner in the top right hand corner here and i'm going to g z to drag it up in z and then r x and i want to rotate it 90 degrees and uh so for that i'm just going to type Nine zero, so it's rotated 90 degrees in the x-axis. Now this is gonna be easier to place from the side, so I'm gonna push three so we can get this side perspective here. Select the object and I'm just gonna hit G to put it roughly where it should go and S to scale and G again to just place it where I want it to go. And then the last thing I wanna do is this really, I think the snowman's nose should be a carrot so this should be kind of kind of long and stretched out so in order to do that if we hit scale obviously it's just going to get bigger overall but what we can do is we can hit s and y to scale it constrained to the y-axis so it's only getting longer in that one direction and then i'll click to confirm and there we go there is our snowman so the snowman's looking pretty weak. Uh, we'll come back and, and you know make, uh, make something better of this, but for, I think that's enough for now. So uh, until the next video.